Um, but we always hear, you know, like proximal oral carpectomies, and then you hear about, you know, four corner fusions. I guess can can we kind of go into those options and what they are, why they work, and then you know what patient you'd use them for? Absolutely, yeah. So if we can bring up kind of an image with some um, more advanced arthritis, so here's either one of these is, is great. So when you start talking about that stage two or, or stage three arthritis of what we'll, we'll talk about slack specifically here. Now your scaphoid and the scaphoid fossa uh, is pretty damaged with no cartilage. So now you're going a little bit more aggressive. And I do emphasize to all my patients that this is a quote unquote salvage procedure, right? At this point in time, anything we're going to do will not give you normal motion or restore you to pre-injury. But if I can get you to have less to no pain with a similar range of motion as you have now, uh, would you be content with that? And most say yes. So when we're talking about that stage two, the scaphoid needs to be removed either way. And so for a proximal row carpectomy or the four corner, both of them, the scaphoid is being removed. Now, when you're talking about a proximal row, you have to take into account the capitate as well as the lunate fossa. Because if you see here now, you've removed the proximal rows. So the weight bearing surface is actually the capitate sitting in the lunate fossa. And so if you're at a stage three where the capitate is pretty worn, this would not make a good option. And that's generally on the OITE, they're gonna kind of show you either they will only have one option of a PRC or four corner, or if they have both options on there, that means that there's probably something going on in the mid carpal joint. It's a stage three where a PRC, if you have no cartilage on your capitate, and then you make that the weight bearing surface, obviously they're not gonna do very well because now you just take an arthritic bone and put it back in the joint. So it's still gonna be arthritis. Okay. And so that's when you start kind of pivoting more towards the four corner. And just reading on this, I saw that there, there are like a bunch of different different techniques as far as proximal row carpectomies. I've, I've saw, you know, just like you just said, they, they mentioned traditionally, if you have any degeneration of your capitate articular surface or that lunate fossa, like you're saying, that that's kind of a contraindication. But now they're saying that there are different techniques as far as, far as you know, proximal row carpectomies with osteochondral resurfacing of the capitate with a graft or uh, you know, capitate head resection with a dorsal capsule interposition. Do you, you use any of these techniques or, um, or do you, you know, any, anything that you can uh, educate us about any of these other options or, you know, because, uh, you know, that's just something that yeah, I read about. So I'm just, not, just interested to see. Yeah. So that first one you see there, the, the PRC with osteochondral, that's essentially like the oats of the knee. Mm -hmm. Right, so you're taking a section of cartilage with some subchondral bone, you're removing the cartilage of the capitate that, or you're removing that section of the capitate where the cartilage is worn and replacing it with uh, the cartilage that you harvested. I've done this once to mixed uh, results, but I, I think it's something to know that exists. I think we need a little bit more literature on that. Some of the people that do it more often are pretty excited about it. One of the things that I do and you could argue you could do this for almost all PRCs is the capsular in a position you have there on the bottom. So I use this when there's maybe a little bit of wear on the capitate head, but it's not significant. And what you do is you take a distal base flap of the capsule, meaning you, re you release the capsule at the rim of the radius, leave it attached dorsally, you do your PRC, and then you actually take a fiber wire at the bond and secure that capsule from dorsal around volar to the volar ligament. So now you've tucked the capsule underneath the capitate. So now mm -hmm. the capitate sitting on the capsule, sitting in the lunate fossa. So now it's got itself a nice smooth surface uh, where that little bit of arthritis on the capitate won't make as big of a difference. Okay, and you said you, you do typically use these. Are there any particular patients that you use this for and or you know that you can think of? Yeah, so... When you're starting to go down the capsule inner position route, you're, you're talking about, do I do this versus do I do a four corner fusion? So the four corner fusion is something that, that I think uh, works well, but obviously it, it's got some downsides. Anytime you're trying to get four bones to fuse, as we know from anywhere in orthopedics, sometimes A, that's difficult, and B, if you have a type C host, uh, a smoker, you're 
a little more hesitant about trying to do a fusion. So someone like that, a PRC with capsular interposition would be great because you don't have to worry about uh, the fusion mass. You don't have to mobilize them for three months. There's no hardware. Hmm. There's, there's some recent studies coming out that show that PRC does just as well as for corner, if not better, even in the younger population. So just to backtrack, the classic literature was, you know, a young, healthy person gets the four corner because the weight bearing surface is still the lunate in the lunate fossa. So uh, the anatomic weight bearing surface versus the PRC, the radius of curvature of the proximal pole of the cap is different. The new literature says, hey, they do, the PRC does just as well and it has less complication risks because of the four corner can have a non-union or, or other issues, prominence of hardware. The only thing I would say to kind of, you know, warn people when they're reading these studies is if you think about it, it's a little bit of a cemented hip versus a press fit. The cemented hip does well early on and then it fails later, whereas the press fit, uh, once it integrates, then it does better later. So when you're talking about these PRCs, they do well early on, but none of the studies are showing us 20 years from now, what is that surface like? Right. Whereas the four corner does has a higher rate of early complications, but we know long term that maintaining the lunate and the lunate fossa as a weight bearing surface may be a better idea. So just something recently that's come out over the past few years, which are leading people to be a little more aggressive on the PRC route. 